You know, I just stepped out here. I barely got out the door and you're here already. Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. And you know what? I haven't done my deck for a while. And the reason I haven't come out here to do a zip around the deck is because I haven't done anything. I'm gonna have to tell you, everything you see is all last year's growth. And she saw me grab the camera so she ran out to see too. So I figured, you know what? Let's do a zip around the deck I'll tell you what I'm doing today and what I'm not doing today out here and why, as well as what I'm going to probably do in the next couple weeks. And yes, everything you see here has all been here really since last year. This is fairly new, the strawberries, but I'm going to be changing that up come this spring. So let's kind of look through what is going on here. This is Popolo and this Gary loves. I do not like Popolo, but if you like cilantro, oh, I see baby Popolo coming up. See this? That little two leaf thing? What's interesting is insects really like it. And when you have it in a cup, see how it's coming up in a cup? Roly polies and insects don't get to it. They like it when it's tiny. They won't eat it when it's big. There's no insects on that at all. But if you like cilantro, you will really like this. This is going to go to flower. I see the flowers starting. And Gary loves it. And we had it growing in my chair garden all year. So this has just been great. But he comes out here when I'm making dinner, tacos, enchiladas, whatever he wants to eat. And he just grabs them and he just eats them. So he absolutely loves it. This is growing in a flower pot. And right there, and then I've got celery. We're going to groom all this and get rid of it. What else do I have here? I've got some Swiss chard growing in here and some walking onions and parsley. This is my oregano that has to come out of here. It's too tight. It's been in here for years and it is just so root bound that I'm going to take it apart. I don't know when, but I'll take it apart pretty soon. Yes, we've got tomatoes growing through here too. And I'm going to get them in smaller pots and move them around. But this, yeah, this is oregano. And then down here, it's just a tomato plant pretty much gone. See, even though it looks like it's gone, there's still, it's still hanging on there and still throwing flowers, but I'll change a lot of that up. Now this is stevia, probably getting ready to die back. Let me explain to you why. We've been getting cold. Look how cloudy it is. I wanted to collect some seed today. That's what I was going to say when I'm not doing. I've got parsley seed. As you can see, you know, real quick, we'll see that's the stevia. And then not much down there, some orange mint garlic chives and this is just the cutting that I'm trying to get the cutting going. I don't care if the insects eat it but I want this cutting to take root which it has already of my hybrid brassica. I'm not even sure what it is. It's like a three-way. It's probably collard, uh, dinosaur kale. It's a three-way so I'm getting that going. But what I was saying is I wanted to collect seed today. See the seed won't come off in my hand. It's been misty all morning and with it misty and damp that is not the right time to collect seed. And the reason is, it's just going to be damp. You would have to take it somewhere and put it in a really dry area and make sure it dries well, really well before you store it. So I'm going to wait. We're supposed to have another heat wave later on in the week. So we'll see how that goes. And then I'll collect the seeds. This is basil. There are still some seeds in here. The goldfinches have been coming in and they've been feeding off it. This is an interesting basil plant. Because see, this is part of the plant coming up from the bottom. This basil plant is last year's plant. These are seeds that dropped in there and grew. But this one and this one, this plant is over a year old. So it lasted all through winter. It never died back. This part of the plant has died back. So I'll trim it back later. But again, I want to collect some of the seeds. I've looked and it's hard to tell on a damp day, but there really isn't much seeds in there. See, there's, there's two seeds there. So I'm going to go through and collect a few. I don't need that many. I don't use a ton of basil, so a few would be fine. That is my sage, and it's dying back, and it may be root bound. I'm going to move that, too. This is purslane growing, along with peppers growing here. I don't know if you remember this plant. This plant got totally eaten by a hornworm to nothing, and now it's grown back, and it's full of peppers. And this is growing in a basket. You know why? Well, first of all, the basket has no bottom, but it's giving it shelter and it's sheltering the plant and the plant really likes that. Keep that in mind if you have problems with anything. That sometimes just sheltering and protecting from the wind certain plants, you can get a good top growth on it and it will protect the plant from the bottom. So it's keeping it a little warmer. So the pepper does really, really well here. 
and it's just sitting in there with the purslane. And then everything here really is just the same old, same old. I've had some tomatoes, they're starting to die back. I see a hornworm head come in here. I do not believe the hornworm is still here. I think an oriole had got it just before they all left. All the orioles now are gone. They have gone south for the winter and they won't come back until early spring. So we won't have any of them. So now we have to depend on smaller birds like bush tits and the other birds around here, even mockingbirds, to grab any insects if they see them. And a lot of those won't take super big hornworms and things like that. Walking onions in there, more purslane. There's some purple basil back here. This is garlic chives. There's tomato plants growing through there. This is more parsley. See, I wanna come through here on a warm day grab a bunch of seeds, put them in an envelope, and save them, and get that going. Look at this. Let's see if you can see this. Like I said, I want to clean this up. You'll be able to see. The hole on the bottom, and it's still draining, has a celery growing out. Isn't that funny? It's kind of like an upside down planter, and a celery seed got down there and it grew. This is just a cutting I brought over. This is a purple tree colored, and I want to get this started. And once it gets started, I'll move it somewhere else. Chocolate mint, that has been perfect. I had that going all winter last year and I hope to have some more mint growing. I've talked about this in a lot of my garden tours. This is lettuce. I went through all the different lettuce here and I crushed it in here and then covered it with a little bit of potting soil in hopes it would grow. And I got two. Normally, I take the seed heads and I crush them through and I get a whole bunch of them and I move them. But there is such a bad drought this year that the birds are really emptying out all the seeds. And I wanted to get some more lettuce, but that is actually very good. The two lettuce, if they make it, will get really big. And then when they go to seed, I will cover it so I can get, you know, some seeds from them. I've got seeds around the yard and I'll just keep trying, but two is better than nothing. Back here, I still have my onions. Let's see, I don't know if you can see it. Let me see if I can get in here. This is south thistle. And I'm leaving this right now for the goldfinches. And eventually I will pull it out and compost it. And then see the onions? They're actually, let me move this off. See the onions? There's more there. I'm almost done with the onions. I think there's only a couple of, I don't want this really to grow. I'm gonna pull this out. I've been storing them all year since they died back in the summer. And I pull them out, I come out here and pull them out, but I think I've got, no, here's another one. Look, I didn't even know. Oh, cool. Oh, good. Look how beautiful. I store them, which is crazy, where they grew. I don't overwater it, so you wanna make sure it drains well. It's okay to be wet. You want it to be a little wet, but you don't want it to be waterlogged. It will store there, I'm gonna use the word forever. It will store there until you go to use it. Now, as you can see, this one is starting to regrow. That's because the season's right now for onions to start. But I'm gonna end up using that because I'm gonna grow some new onions, but that is really good. So there's one, two, oh my goodness, three. God, they're gonna, goodness, they're gonna be big onions. Four, are you telling me there might be another one back there? Because I've been pulling them out. I really packed that with onions and I'm, I know I, I do see another one back there. I overpacked it. So when I needed onions, I would just go yank them out. Didn't matter if there were too many. I used the small ones in between and they stayed there. If you bring them in the house, you know how it is. Leave them on the counter, they're gonna rot, right? But if you leave them in the soil, they don't rot. They just stay there. They're alive. They're a, they're a plant that's alive, that's hibernating. When you bring it in the house and store it in the, in the refrigerator, it's perfectly fine, but I like it this way. That's my favorite way. Look at this. Tomatillos, so we're gonna have a lot of tomatillos here. And then there's my tricolored sage that I use for pizza and different things. Again, more lettuce. This is lettuce and this is lettuce. Now, most of the lettuce has no seed on it. This is not a day I can get it because the birds have been coming in. Like I said, they've been wiping everything clean. Let's go through here. Parsley needs a good cleaning. And I'm gonna to try to go through here and clean this. This is a lot of parsley because I probably just sprinkled parsley in there. Again, more garlic chives, nothing really in there. The celery that's literally done, died back. If I trim it in the bottom, I see a lot of baby celery coming up. All those little tiny specks are all baby celery. If I trimmed it, it would come back from the root. I'm not sure, I might trim it all the way to the ground and hope it doesn't come back from the root because I would prefer to have new celery. Not for any particular reason, but it just gets too big. 
And then there is Malabar spinach coming up in here. This is Malabar spinach. And then this is just some green sorrel. I'm not really big on green sorrel. This is, what is this? This is, oh, this is just um, Swiss chard. The seed is good. I like green Swiss chard, so I'm gonna get some seed. See, nothing, nothing with nothing. This is the purslane here that has died back. Probably it's been in the sun. Now this is loaded with seed. That's all seed. It grows like mad. See all the new little purslane coming up? That's all, per I'm not big on purslane, but boy, I'll tell you, it is healthy. There are so many things you can do with purslane. You can even make like a, uh, I don't know what the term is, but liquidize it down and put it on, let's say, a swelling, and it's supposed to even reduce swelling. It's an anti-inflammatory. It's loaded with vitamin C. The birds don't eat the seeds. I never see them eating the seeds. Walking onions in here, just a simple tomato cage with these round containers you can get at the store, and that's got my walking onions, and as you can see, it's loaded with a little purslane coming up in there. More Swiss chart. Oh, it's starting to miss a little bit rain. It's been kind of, kind of raining off and on a little bit. More walking onions. Let's see if I can get through here. More, this is uh, tomatillos still growing. Walking onions through there. Here's red vein sorrel that I need to find the place for it. The squash died back. I got some squash on, off of it already. There's some red, kind of a reddish Swiss chard. More walking onions down there. This is a moringa. Isn't this cool? In a pot. Look at that, it's even got a pod. It's got a couple pods, look at that, isn't that beautiful? Right here on the deck in a flower pot, there's two of them. And there's another little one growing in there. It's two of them in there. And then more mint, and then back here, this is the back side of what you saw, the more purslane. And there is, see this is south thistle. This is what the birds coming in, just love. They eat the seeds in there, those are seed heads. You can, if you're making a green drink, this is absolutely an edible weed. I do put some of it in my green drinks, but I leave this mainly for the birds. And that's it, walking onions, celery. This, like I said, I haven't done anything here. Chocolate mint, my favorite. Now this is, nah, it's a broccoli plant. Not doing that good, but this one's doing good. So this one needs a good trimming and trim that back. I may take that out or move it or do something else. I'll see what happens. What I was going to point out is everything is from last year. I haven't done anything. It's not like, you know, okay, you haven't done anything, you don't have a garden. I still have a garden. I step out here. Here's dill. I still have a garden. I just step out here and use what I want. I need something that tastes like dill. These are dill seeds. Another thing that birds don't really eat, dill seeds. See, now this is, again, not a good time to collect seed. It's too damp. It's been misty and wet. But there's dill, so... Mmm, my hands smell like dill. I like that. So we've been growing everything here without putting out any effort at all. I've done nothing. The only thing I do is keep put feeding the hummingbirds. And I think I want to clean this up too. Uh, it's just, I want to fix it up. I don't need two, three water fountains here, features for the birds. Got Malabar spinach. Oh my goodness, I didn't even see this. I set this here. And it's going up, and then we have this, so when it rains, I can hang a hummingbird feeder here. It's just a bucket lid, and then when it rains, I can hang a small feeder, and the birds can still feed, and they're not in the rain. But look at this, the Malabar spinach on its own went up there. And I usually do, I put some seed in there for the birds, but I usually hang sometimes a hummingbird feeder, and of course, those are the feeders that are over there, and that's where they're feeding around the window probably can barely see but on the other side there that's the hook where she had a nest and that was for two years in a row and that's basically it here I've got carrots still growing I've got tomatoes now tomatoes here are beautiful San Marzano look at that it loves it it hugs the wall then I've got some lettuce coming up in there this is just the watering system i use no big deal and more lettuce in there walking onions and so i just what i'm going to do is clean this up and hopefully i can come back here in a couple weeks because i do want to get serious and plant onions out here that has been the greatest thing in the middle of making dinner just to step out and pull an onion this was full i think i planted like 30 onions little onion sets in there now i want to plant my seeds i got some onion seeds that i started I want to get them in there and take care of that. I'll leave that and I'll see what I want to do in here. If it's just celery, I'll take it out. It's not that important. If it's got something else in there, I'll leave it. And then I'll decide on that too. I don't need a lot of tomatoes here. I've got tomatoes all over the garden to get. 
So we'll see, but that's it. I wanted to do a spin. I've had so many of you saying, what happened to the deck? I love the deck. Well, nothing happened. I can come out here and grab some broccoli leaves. I can grab Swiss chard, parsley. I got a ton of garlic chives, making something quick. Want to add some garlic? Real quick, all the noise that's there. They're putting in, I guess, I don't know, some sort of pole on the other side of the hill, and they've been banging away all morning. So that will probably be done soon. So that's it. And Kitty, if you want some broccoli, Kitty, come on. You want your, look at this. We got a big head of broccoli right now. All right, here she goes. Back, oh, she's got to pick it up. It's a big one, back in the house. I know some of you look at my screen. I should replace the screen door. It's just the sliding glass door. But I had to make, we tried doggy doors. It didn't work for us. So I ended up making a hole there, which really does have to be replaced. Putting a screen there with flaps so it keeps flies and stuff from going up. And what holds the bottom down penny weights so it's just cut and they can go in and out when they want and come on the deck and this way I don't have to worry about coyotes or anything they can just come on the deck here so that's it so I hope I've given you you know an idea of what I'm going to do when to collect seed collect seed if you're collecting some on a really warm dry day and if you can't have any warm days if you don't have them you can collect them but make sure they dry really really well really well before you put it in an envelope or whatever way you're going to store them. I put mine in an envelope. I usually put a little piece of paper towel in there just to collect it. The paper towel will draw the moisture in and then I'm ready to go in the spring when I want to plant. It works really good and make sure you label it. I just use, you've seen the video, I use envelopes that come in with bills and stuff. So with that have a wonderful, wonderful day. And oh, this is amazing. Look at this. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Oh, it smells so good, this purple basil. Bye-bye. Oh, boy, do I have to collect walking onions? They are everywhere before they die back.